All right, so you're looking for a new 3D printer to buy. Today we're going to be looking at the Ender 3. It may have been a good buy in 2018 and 2019, but in 2020, is it outdated? The specific unit we're going to be looking at today is the Ender 3 Pro. Besides from a few upgrades, it's the same machine as its predecessor, the Ender 3. The printer uses a technology called FDM, which means it extrudes a heated plastic filament uh, using a nozzle and layers. The build volume for this machine is 220 millimeters in the X and Y and 250 millimeters in the Z. The 3D printer comes with a standard nozzle size of 0.4 millimeters wide. The printer was built to be able to 3D print PLA, polylactic acid, but not any fl flexibles such as TPU or not any high temp materials such as ABS and nylon. You can either plug your PC directly into the printer to start a print, or you can flash a SD card with the correct code to start a print and plug it into the printer and start a 3D print with that. The machine interface uses a two color LCD screen with a rotary encoder to move through the menu. Now here are the pros and cons. For pros, this printer has a huge community of users, so if you need any help, you can reach out to thousands of other 3D printer owners that have the same exact machine. With a huge community of users, there are a lot of upgrades, so upgradability with this printer is a huge part. And what makes it so easy to upgrade is the fact that the manufacturers kept the source code and everything about the printer open source. So that makes makers tinkering with the machine with the firmware and the hardware so easy to do. Another pro is that this machine has a heated bed, which means that it's gonna be easier in the long run to make an enclosure for the machine to print higher temp materials. Now let's get into the cons. The first and biggest problem is that the stock aluminum build plate is warped. Depending on your unit, it can either be a huge dent in the middle or it can just not be noticeable at all. For me, it was quite big, so I had to add on a glass build plate with a flexible build plate in order to stop it from affecting my prints. The next issue is that the flexible build plate provided is cheap and it wears out the more prints you put on it. So a cheap and easy upgrade is a flexible build plate from Amazon. The small build plate left me wanting more, but this is more than enough for most cosplay, decorations, and practical prints. If you want a larger machine, go for the Artillery Sidewinder X1. Although it's something you can live with, manual bed leveling is such a hassle, especially in 2020. If you wanted to upgrade this, you could buy a BL Touch, again, link in the description, and add it to this printer. My last big issue with this machine is its Bowden type extruder. This means that the extruder motor is at the end of a long tube leading the filament towards the hot end. This means that with flexible filaments, it's not even possible because the flexible filament can get kinked up inside the tube. A solution to this is getting a machine similar to Ender 3, such as the Artillery Genus, which has a direct drive, which means the motor is right on top of the extruder and it's directly pushing the filament in. I'll leave that link in the description. If I were to buy a machine like the Ender 3 in 2020, I would go with the Prusa MK3S. Although it is expensive, you get a good quality machine. Now, if I was on a budget, I'd go with either the new CR6SE or the Ender 3 V2. Both have updated features that the Ender 3 does not, and they both will last longer without needing the upgrades that the Ender 3 does need. Thanks for watching. Our next video will be the detailed assembly of the Tenlog. TLD3 Pro.